Oh, welcome back to the Sanctuary Studio. We're having great conversations with people I like, and here is one I like very much. Her name is Carrie Kozarok, and she is the Executive Director, Balabusta, Do It All at Via Hafta, uh, a great organization you all are familiar with, and if not, you should go look at their work online. Carrie, why are you working 16 hours a day? What is going on? <laughs> These are really challenging times for the people that we're serving and the need out in uh, the world is very great. So VIA HAPTA is a social services agency uh, and we work with people affected by poverty and homelessness. So as the pandemic affects everybody uh, and makes life very challenging, it is the more so for folks who are unstably or unhoused in our city. Wow, and our our mobile uh, mobile food distribution is that still going on? Is it more now than ever? Yeah, so what we've been seeing out in the streets, so we have a mobile outreach van uh, and it's primarily serving people who are currently experiencing homelessness and it is a specific uh, subset of the homeless population known as rough sleepers. Uh, and these are folks who are living outdoors. Uh, since the pandemic began, uh, there's been a marked increase in the number of people who are living outdoors. Uh, many of them left the shelter system out of fear for their safety. Um, and many of them uh, are, you know, braving the, 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 the pandemic uh, outside on the streets of the city. Um, as you know, it's been a particularly cold last couple of months, jarringly cold. And for folks who are outside, it's presented tremendous challenges. Um, that combined with the closure of so many of the formal and the informal amenities that enable people who are rough sleepers to survive in these harsh conditions, uh, we're finding that people are going without food, without access to bathrooms and places to wash their hands, places to get warm. Things that enabled them to survive in the past are lacking, and there are many more people on the streets today. So it's a perfect storm, and there's tremendous need. And are you finding that because of uh, COVID-19, you can't get the same volunteers that you might have had under uh, normal circumstances? Is that affecting you? So it, we actually have no volunteers. We had to make the decision uh, at the beginning of March to discontinue in-person volunteer roles um, out of a concern for uh, the safety of our participants. So our mobile outreach van typically goes out uh, for a van shift in the evenings. Uh, and it is the, the model is that we have two outreach workers with four volunteers from the community. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we know that uh, the pandemic Pandemic was primarily being spread by people who had traveled. Uh, and given the mobility of our volunteer population, we were concerned that uh, their travel could bring COVID-19 into the homeless population who typically don't have the means to travel. So what services are you working on uh, most at this time to uh, stem the, the need? So our mobile outreach van has operated throughout the pandemic with no break. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm pleased to say that we were able to do that. We've had to pivot. Um, the remainder of our programs uh, are all programs that are, are that are geared towards preparing people uh, who have experienced poverty and homelessness uh, to enter into the workforce. So their work readiness programs, uh, we have been able to shift and pivot most of our programs into a digital format. Uh, and we've been able to uh, continue to run them. And uh, I'm pleased to say that we've been able to graduate quite a number of people through our programs and uh, get them ready for next steps. There aren't so many next steps for them available right now which is a challenge of its own. Uh, but uh, so most of our programs have remained operational. Um, you know, the van has been a going concern due to health and safety concerns, um, tremendous demand that's out there and just struggling to meet the demand, knowing that there, there is more demand than we can possibly meet. And it's always hard to accept that. What, uh, what can people do? <laughs> Be out there on the front lines, probably can't make food. What what can we do? 
So we actually are, you know, as as we move towards reopening, uh, one of the things that we're looking at is uh, ways to engage members of the public in uh, volunteer activities. And, you know, we've had such an outpouring of support from the, you know, we call it the Vea Hafta community, and it's uh, mostly the Jewish community. And it's very touching to see the extent to which people genuinely care about these issues and care about the people who have been impacted in such a drastic way. So we have have uh, some virtual volunteer opportunities where we are asking people to cook and bake and bring in uh, food that we are then serving out on our outreach van uh, at night. Uh, we opened up a meal train uh, registration process so we could sort of manage the, the amounts that were coming in. And within an hour, we were booked out to June uh, every, every night covered. Uh, so now we're expanding that and, and asking people to be uh, making sandwiches that will be served out on the van and dropping them off as well. And they can find all this information on our website. Uh, we are currently looking for uh, tech volunteers to help provide uh, technical support to our program participants who will be starting in a new uh, our new cohort of work and life skills training programs in, at the end of June um, and finding, you know, a lot of people who uh, have been marginalized do not have tremendous uh, technical skills. So we're looking for some virtual volunteers to offer basically tech support in how to log in and how to use, you know, basic processes uh, with the computer to access the materials that we're teaching. Um, and we'll continue to find new, newer and newer ways for uh, engaging the volunteers in the community as we go along and move closer to physical reopening. So I agree with you. I've seen a, an uptick in people saying, I'm, you know, we're struggling, but we're okay. We want to do something for others. Uh, I hope you don't mind. I want to cut to the head of the line a little light. Uh, Beth Tora has some sandwiches that we'd like to uh, contribute. I'll, I'll obviously um, go through the whatever procedures we have to follow, but I want to tell you that we have uh, some leftovers. We're going to make sandwiches, a whole lot of them, and we are going to provide it to Via Hafta. So I'm thrilled to be able to do that. I know the members support that as well. And I know that people might not have thought what happens to Shul leftovers while they're not here. But the reality is we plan on turning them into something that will uh, will go to your life-saving efforts. So, Carrie, I want to thank you, as always, for your work and uh, specifically for your work at this time. I know when I tried to reach out, you were trying to connect people to nonstop to, to do good things with uh, and for Via Hafta. I hope people respond to you. But to you yourself, I know that you make it look easy and uh, you're working incredibly hard. Is that James Dean, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams behind you? Is that what I see on the wall? <laughs> no, Is it's it? not. It's a, it's a, I think it's, it's a generic painting. I, I can't even remember where I got it. <laughs> okay. A Renaissance well, street view. Sorry. It's good. Well, uh, listen, I'll, all I can say is I've always thought of the work you do as being the Boulevard of Hopeful Future. So, you know, uh, really, I, I think that uh, you're taking you're taking lives into your own hand and you're doing great with it. So hopefully you get the support you need. And I just want to say thank you and look forward to delivering the, the food for uh, to Via Hafta safely. Thank you so much, so, Yossi. Yeah. I mean, one thing I, if I can, Yossi, if I can add one thing that people can be doing, we have a constant, constant need for clothing uh, at Vea Hafta that we do uh, distribute from our outreach van. Uh, we constantly need um, men's sweatpants and sweatshirts um, that can be used, gently used, um, as well as new underwear, new socks. So if people have things like that, we have a donation bin in our parking lot at 200 bridge landing we very much appreciate people dropping those things off we don't have use for children's things or baby things but uh, particularly men's clothing uh, not suits and fancy things but stuff that people can really use uh, and that's one way that everybody can help support our efforts I've got two bags of, uh, of grown-up men size stuff I'm gonna be dropping off for you and uh, just just so you know the, the candy striped pants are really comfortable but they're probably too big for you so don't yeah okay uh, my dear friend Carrie Shabbat Shalom and uh, stay well thank you thank you
Thanks, Yossi.